G'day, welcome to Down in the Woodworks. In today's video, I'm going to be turning this off cut of blackwood into a platter or serving tray. A little while back, I made a live edge table out of a couple of slabs that I cut myself from a log of blackwood. And this is one of the off cuts from that log. I didn't want to throw it out because it is beautiful timber, so I thought to myself, there's got to be something I can make with it. And the idea came to me of, like I said, a platter or a serving tray. The piece was actually longer than this. I have cut this end piece off it here. Obviously, that was too long for a tray. So I shortened it down to what I think is a, is a good width, good length, sorry. So the first thing to do is to run it through thickness planer to get this surface uh, smooth and flat. And then once I've done that, I'm going to flip it over. And because it's got this natural dip in the back of the, um, the board, I'm hoping that if I just put it through the thickness planer with a couple of light passes, I'll just get two flat sections just on the end of the board here, and that will give it some feet to sit on. To be able to put this slab through the thickness, it needed to have one flat milled surface as a reference. But as you can see, it doesn't. So I just made my own temporary reference surface. I hot glued two same size timbers to the ends of the slab because at this stage of the design, the ends were staying as they were, so I couldn't put any fixings into them. By using some 10 mil spacers, the timbers ended up below the surface of the slab, which was going to get planed down. Once the glue was set, I screwed on this scrap pine board and that was my flat reference surface, so I could plane the top of the slab flat. And as you can see, that worked out perfect. Even though the top of the platter was now perfectly flat, the underside was very uneven. If I try to put it through the thickness as it was, the infeed rollers wouldn't make contact with that uneven surface and it wouldn't get pulled through the machine. So I made this temporary sled with side rails that were the same height as the slab. And it's these side rails that would contact the infeed rollers of the thicknesser and pull the whole assembly through the planer, allowing the underside to be planed parallel to the top. Each time the sled goes through the machine, the side rails get planed down as well level with the slab. Well I've run the slab through the thicknesser now for a few times and I must admit the the underside isn't turning out exactly as I uh, pictured it would but that's okay because um, these shapes that are evolving on the back of the slab the further I mill it down um, I quite like them actually so there's been a slight change of plans, which uh, is not unusual for me in the middle of a build. I was originally gonna route some grooves into the end of the board for like finger hold, so you could lift the, um, the platter up. But I've changed my mind about that now because like I said, I like the way the, the, the bottom's turning out. So I'm gonna mill it down about another quarter of an inch to get right down to the uh, raw material in the center. That'll still leave quite a bit of live edge on both sides. And the reason why I'm doing that is I wanna get a bigger footprint on the bottom because now what, I've, uh, what I'm planning on doing for the sides is I'm going to run the board vertically on the table saw with the blade set at a uh, 30 degree angle and that'll give it a nice, um, nice shallow chamfer 
and that'll I think that'll be a lot more comfortable as a, as a handhold. To mill down this slab an extra quarter of an inch, I'm not going to put it through the thickness planer because with the thickness planer, I need to just take very, very shallow cuts each time, and that will take quite a few passes through the machine. So I've decided I'm going to do it on my uh, router. That way I can um, make a much bigger or much deeper cut, and I reckon I can get away with probably two cuts, which will uh, get it down to where I want. And how good is that? I could use the same sled setup to do this. After this I ran the sled through the thickness planer one last time with a very shallow pass to clean up any router marks. I then cut those shallow chamfers on the underside at each end about 9mm from the top surface. When cutting end grain on hardwood, burn marks are inevitable, but trying to sand that end grain is almost impossible. So I set up this temporary right angle support piece, sized just right to allow the chamfers to sit flat on my jointer. Using the jointer to clean up those surfaces was so quick and easy. To give the end profiles a little more interest and give the platter a bit of a floating look, I cut a rebate into the underside at the bottom of each chamfer. Then the whole thing got a good sanding. A signature and date. And a couple of coats of gloss varnish. To finish it off, I added these little rubber feet and the platter was done. Well, that's it for this video. I hope you guys enjoyed it. I think the platter turned out real nice and I'm pretty happy with the um, design changes I made along the way. Before I close off though, there's something I have to say and that's a huge thank you to all of you guys. Uh, about two weeks ago, the channel hit 10,000 subscribers and to be honest, uh, it's been going well since then. I think at the time of editing this video, it's uh, practically 11,000 subscribers. So yeah, uh, just a huge thank you. It wouldn't be that way without you guys, so thanks for all the time and support that you guys have spent with me. Uh, talking about subscribers, if you haven't done so already, please consider doing so, just to show your support and also so you don't miss out on any future videos. If you like this video, give it a huge thumbs up, but until the next one, you guys all have a great day.